Okay, so why is C++ so slow? But what kind of slow do I mean, right? Is it slow to execute? No. Slow to compile? Not really. I want to talk about slow to developing, right? And I think the three main contributing factors to that is the language itself, our tooling, build systems, package managers, build files, um, and libraries, or lack thereof. So one thing we, one of the key priorities in build two is to make every C++ developer potential cross-platform library developer, even if they only comfortable working in a single platform. And one of the key metrics that we try to optimize is the time between uh, nothing and a project that is CI'd on all the platforms and compilers. So this is basically the time between nothing and when you actually can do something useful, right? Implement your logic. So, um, so I have about four minutes left. Uh, let's see if we can do it in four minutes. So this is GitHub, I'm sure most of you have seen. Um, so Jens made a macro called libcpp. I'm going to make a library called libcpp.con. Um, we'll give it a description. Nothing really um, new to the most of you, I hope. So I'll initialize readme, I'll uh, like MIT as a license. Off we go. It's created. So now I'm going to clone it to my local machine. Right. And if we look, look inside, these are the, the files that GitHub created for us. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to actually fill it with some a basic library template. So we use the BDEP, it's a project dependency manager in build two. So we say it's a library, it's written in C++. So now it's it created quite a bit more extra files there, some source files. So essentially it's hello library that is, that is set up to be a cross-platform library that's ready for you to fill in. So one of the files there is the manifest file. So if we look at that, describes this library as a package. If we look at there, we can see that the summary and the license were extracted from what GitHub has generated. So this saves us some time, no need to copy and paste things. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna initialize a build configuration so you can have as many as you want. I, I'll just create one. I'm on Linux, I like GC, so that's what I'm gonna use. So they have created the build configuration. So next I'm gonna go ahead and build it locally. Uh, we can see there's even a test in this library, so we can probably run a test. Why not, right? Okay, so locally everything works. So I'm gonna go ahead and commit it. and push it to GitHub. So we've tested it locally, right? But, you know, we haven't tested quite a few platforms, Linux, uh, I mean, Mac OS, Windows, various compilers. So what we can do now is use the CI command to CI it on all the different uh, platforms. So this is quite a bit different to what you, most of you have, are used to. You're used to pull CI where something, you know, checks your repository and builds it when it has time and resources. So in build two, it's, we do it differently. We have push CI, so actually send your CI request explicitly. And in return, you get a link to the CI task, which you can copy and paste into your browser. So you can go take a look at that. Make it a little bit bigger, maybe. Um, so you can see already four build configurations are building, some FreeBSD there, Mac OS, um, if we go and look at the uh, configurations list, that's what's available. So it's basically Linux, Mac OS, Windows, uh, FreeBSD for good measure, right? To keep us honest, and also all the all the major compilers, all the versions that you would probably want to do. So it's 35 build configurations in total currently. Um, so if we hit refresh, now there's seven builds already going on. Um, so if you are interested, you can if you want to see the end result, so all 35 of them will be clean. You can dig the logs and, you know, if you can, if you want to go dig around, go to cicppget.org and you will see the first task day is what I've just submitted. Okay, three, three seconds to spare. 